Hi, I'm Pastor Mark Lingenfelder with Inspire Caris Pastors Network. And you're watching a presentation of our series called Caris Beliefs, where we explore who we are and what we believe as the Caris Fellowship of Churches. This presentation is part one of two parts that will focus on the subject of biblical mission. In this presentation, Rock Lagoya will help us explore some of the essentials of what it means to be a healthy disciple of Jesus Christ. Jesus gave his followers a mission to make disciples who make disciples. Listen carefully as Rock explains how we accomplish that mission. Imagine a group of construction workers building a structure on top of a cement foundation. Looking puzzled, a city inspector approaches the site manager and asks, Excuse me, what kind of building is this going to be? What is its purpose? The site manager responds, My crew and I decided to build a bowling alley. Stunned, the city inspector exclaims, A bowling alley? Zoning ordinances prohibit you from building a bowling alley in a residential neighborhood. Where is your blueprint? Irate, the site manager digs out the blueprint, which was buried under a pile of construction materials in the back of his truck. After reading it, the city inspector says, The plan on this blueprint calls for a single-family home. You are at odds with the architect and our city planners. Tear everything down and start over. By ignoring the building plan laid out in the blueprint, the construction team found themselves off mission. Sadly, many Christians find themselves off mission because they are not familiar with God's plan for the church. What about you? If asked, could you articulate God's mission for the church? I invite you to join me as we consider together God's mission for his church. In Matthew 28, 19 through 20, Jesus issued the Great Commission. He said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The Chiris Fellowship has clarified its commitment to the biblical mission of the church by stating, We affirm that God's plan for this age is best summarized in Jesus' command to make disciples of all nations. In other words, the mission of the church is to make disciples who make disciples. The Great Commission is Jesus' final marching orders for his church. He not only mandated that we make disciples, but he also explained how. The method of discipleship is indicated by two participles. First, baptizing, that is referring to water baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And secondly, teaching, that is teaching all of Jesus' instruction. For example, the Sermon on the Mount, the Great Commandment, Jesus' parables, the Olivet Discourse, the New Commandment, and the Upper Room Discourse, among others. Making disciples who make disciples presupposes evangelism. In fact, one cannot be a true disciple of Jesus Christ until he or she trusts him as Savior. The Chiris Fellowship affirms that this includes the evangelistic call to reconciliation with God by means of the completed work of Christ. The Apostle Paul says, All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. That's 2 Corinthians 5, 18, and 19. You see, we are faithful to the ministry of reconciliation when we invite others to be reconciled to God by his grace through faith in his Son. Every disciple of Jesus Christ should be encouraged by the fact that the gospel itself is invested with God's power. Paul says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God 
for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek, Romans 1.16. Our confidence in evangelism further increases when we consider the fact that the Holy Spirit empowers our witness. But you will receive power when the Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. The words of Jesus, Acts 1.8. Whenever you attempt to make disciples who make disciples, always remember that you have been equipped with a God-empowered gospel message and a Spirit-empowered witness. The Holy Spirit also empowers our obedience as mature disciples of Christ. The Kairos Fellowship affirms the lifelong pursuit of obedience to God by means of the ongoing work of the Holy Spirit. Paul says in Ephesians 3.16 that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being. Daily, Spirit-empowered acts of obedience are evidence that we are genuine disciples of Jesus Christ. And so what are some other marks of mature discipleship? Well, the following marks are in no particular order. I've numbered them, but that has nothing to do with their importance. First, mature disciples consciously depend upon Christ. Jesus said in John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Second, mature followers of Jesus live a life of prayer. And he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. Luke 18, 1. Third, mature disciples abide in God's word. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. John 8, 31. Fourth, Jesus' disciples love him and others. John 13, 34, and 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another by this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Fifth, mature followers of Christ deny daily their fleshly desires. Luke 9, 23. And he said to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Sixth, true disciples serve the Lord and others. Galatians 5:13. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Seventh, mature followers of Christ make disciples who make disciples. Mark 1.17 And Jesus said to them, Follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. Dear friend, we are all to become fishers of people who are caught in the rip current of their own sin. We are disciples who make disciples. Jesus promised in Matthew 16, 18, I will build my church. And his blueprint for the church is found in the New Testament. We cooperate with his building program when we make disciples who make disciples. So, if you want to stay on mission, please don't forget to read God's inspired blueprint. Thanks for joining us for this brief study on biblical mission. We hope it will inspire you to grow more and more in your faith and understanding of God's Word, ultimately helping you live a Jesus-centered life. We encourage you to use the articles and discussion questions that accompany this video, and we hope that you will join us for the rest of this series as we explore other topics relating to who we are and what we believe.